Hi everyone, thanks for joining another Float Masterclass. If you don't know already, my name is Emily and over the next little while, we're gonna take a deep dive into Float's primary report. So our people report and our project report, just like we have our schedule and our project plan. So just wanna remind everyone today, I'm logged in as a super level user with admin level access, meaning I'm able to see all of the people and all of the projects within my team. So regardless of your access, you'll still be able to see the same suite of reports. You'll still be able to access the reports. However, you'll only see the data that matches that of your permissions, meaning that if you can only see yourself in the schedule and only your own respective projects, then you'd only be able to see yourself um, in the people report and only your own respective projects in the project reports. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our report. So you're gonna do that by navigating to these three buttons on the left-hand side. You have your schedule, which has your schedule, your project plan and log team if you're using our time tracking functionality, our manage tab, but then you have the shortcut to the reports. Now I'm going to jump over to people. So you have people and projects. I'm looking at my schedule data and I'm gonna look at by weeks and I'm gonna look at the next 12 weeks here. All right, let's take a look. So the people report where we're at now provides your team with the numbers behind your team. So when you're looking more at a long-term planning or resource planning, capacity planning uh, utilization, you're going to navigate to this report. So this is where you're really going to monitor your, monitor your team's utilization, view your team's capacity at the department level, as you can see right here. Okay. And then see some overtime, track the time off, uh, their logged hours as well if you're using that as well. So to access the people report, you just need to make sure that you're toggled onto the, the people um, toggle right here and you can navigate between the two. So we'll just stick uh, with the people report for the time being. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the appropriate date range you'd like to cover. So the people and the tasks you'd like to see, and then the preferred chart above, and that will be reflected based on those dates. So you can select from our drop down here, or you can manually just drag and drop uh, the dates that way. Okay. You'll see all of your team's scheduled hours, billable, non-billable, tentative, are displayed in the chart above. If you just hover over, you'll have um, a little bit of information that reveals the numbers for, again, that particular date range. These dots at the bottom reflect milestones. If they're gray, they're statutory holidays that you've pro probably programmed in using our team settings um, public holidays. If you're looking at the summary bar here, you can see the aggregate totals for the date range again that you've selected. So for April, you can see that my entire team, no filters, have 977 hours of capacity set scheduled at 74% or 708 .8, 718 .8 of those 977. So that's again the aggregate data here in this bar. Then if you look down a little bit, you're going to see um, some table information below and we'll, we'll walk through these. So you first have the total capacity in hours. So you can see we have person, their respective department, and then we're jumping here at the capacity. And again, this is in hours. So the capacity in hours is the total working hours per day multiplied, multiplied by the number of working days for each person in the time period. So if we're looking at a work week that is Monday to Friday, eight hours a day, the total available hours would then be 40 hours, five by eight. Uh, this number is then multiplied by the number of viewable people so um, this also takes into account time off, public holidays, custom holidays, all of those things deduct uh, a person's overall capacity. Then we have the scheduled hours here. So the total number of task hours assigned again within that time period, so the month of April in this instance, you can further break that down by billable versus non-billable. Um, and then you have a percentage here at the end, just to give you a little bit of a pulse point, okay? Now, when we're looking at that pulse point or health check, however you want to define it, you can click to sort high to low or low to high. But essentially what we're looking at is you can pick and choose. So you have the scheduled percentage of capacity is the default, but it could also be set to the display the billable percentage of capacity or the billable percentage of the, the total scheduled hours. So you'll want to pick and choose what's the appropriate pulse point or health check for yourself. Okay. So the search and filtering capability really lets you drill down into the report and the data. So you can select from some of the preset filters or directly type in key terms, 
Um, it could be people, uh, person types, person tags, time off, departments, so on and so forth. Um, and then you can filter by multiple categories at the same time. So let's just say I want to look at um, just a few specific departments. I could add those in and then maybe I want to also isolate for a specific project. I could do so as well. Okay. If you ever just want to see your own respective data, if you're someone within the tool, you can also just toggle on me and then we'll isolate the data exclusive to yourself. If you only have access to see yourself, this is what the report would look like anyways. And you would see your, again, your own respective projects, but um, data only managed by yourself. Now, a couple other things you can do to change here, you can view in days, weeks, or months, and you can also export out your data. So you have the, oops, I've toggled over to the projects. So let me just toggle back over to the people. Still, you can view days, weeks, and months. And again, you can export out your data. So you have an option here to export chart data, table data, and then that time tracking data only if you're using that time tracking data. So right now you can see I don't have a lot and that's because I'm looking in the future. Um, but if you are looking at historic data, you would obviously be able to, to export that if, again, if you are using that feature. So if you are exporting out, um, you have three options. These are going to export out in a CSV and it's the raw data and you can edit it however you see fit. You can utilize the API to feed this data into other tools, perhaps a Power BI or a Tableau, um, but know that that's always accessible at any point in time. Other things that you can do from this report is you can physically click into specific people, um, perhaps you want to, and, and what, what, what will happen here is we'll isolate and just populate those, those uh, filters for you. You could also click into specific departments, again, um, filling in that uh, filtering and uh, searching capabilities already for you. Now the project report, how it functions is not that different. So we'll just toggle over to the project report. Again, select your appropriate date range. Something we didn't cover on the people report is you can isolate for different types of employees. So in this instance, I'm looking at my employees, my contractors, those that are active, hiding out that those, those who are archived, but maybe I wanna to toggle on my placeholders. So maybe those are future hires. Um, or they're freelancers, or um, they're not in human resources, you can, you can define those however you see fit. You can see I'm also looking at all my types of tasks, those are the confirmed, tentative, and completed, alongside all my types of time off. Again, I'm looking at my scheduled data, maybe I wanna look in days this time, so you have two options here on the project report to view all of your active projects within that time frame, or you can look by client with the respective projects embedded within. Okay. Now what's important to note here is the project report provides an overview of all of the active projects in Float, again, that you would have access to. So in this case, as an admin level user, I can see all of them. Here you're going to monitor, monitor your utilization and budgets, whether your budget is in financial figures or hours. In budgets, it doesn't matter if your budgets are in financial figures or hours, or if you're working without budgets, you'll be able to see all of the respective data. If you're using the time tracking data, you can use that uh, time tracking option. You can use that as well. So just like before, you'll set the appropriate date range, set all your uh, parameters, and then you can see um, all of your team's scheduled hours, billable and not here those logged hours as well. Just like before, you can hover over, let me just hover over and get a little summary. In this instance, we're looking by day and hovering over the chart will continue to reveal those numbers for the particular date range. And then again, like before, you have that summary bar showing the aggregate totals for the date range you've selected. And then looking back over here, you have those progress meters again to display the status of individual project budgets. So you can click this to soar high to low. Alternatively, you can pick and choose what that appropriate um, percentage you want to you want to track uh, is. Now, just like on the people report, you can export out this data again. You don't have the option to export out time tracking data on this report. Um, that's because that's linked to the people report. So you have the chart data and the table data. Now, if I just uh, go back to the projects here, remember, again, you can click into specific project reports, isolating exclusively for that project. Um, and what we'll do here is we'll break up the, 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 the information, again, exclusively for this project, if you're using phases by phases, and if you're not using phases, 
we'll start at the task level. But this is a great report to see an overarching view of as to where people are and how that's affecting their overarching budget. Again, exclusive to one unique project. So if you're a project planner, this is probably a project manager. This is probably going to be um, a place that you're going to come to often for your respective reports. Now, there's shortcuts to get to these places. So if I jump over to my managed uh, page here, and I want to look at a report exclusive to one of my projects, you can simply just click that um, option there. And you can see again, that data exclusive to that unique project. So we'll just clear out that filter. But again, as I mentioned, what you can do is you can just click into specific projects into specific clients, so, so on and so forth to automatically populate that filtering capability. Now we're going to pause at that today and just talk about our scheduled reports, but do know that we do have additional reports, specifically if you are using our time tracking uh, feature. So the reports don't change in terms of aesthetics. So if I were to look at maybe last month and our logs data, perhaps by weeks, you can see that the, the report is very similar in the way that it, it looks aesthetically. However, we're swapping out that scheduled column for the logged column. Alternatively, maybe you want to look at a side by side comparison. So your actual versus estimate or your scheduled versus logged with an additional column really highlighting that difference. So perhaps you have questions that specific individuals, maybe Amber in this instance, have a, a pretty significant difference. Is that because Amber is constantly getting looped into projects that she wasn't assigned to? So in this instance, you can see was, Amber was never scheduled against this Humberwood project, but logged 32 hours. Is that because she has a skill set that other people on the team don't have? Are there particular departments with a significant um, discrepancy with regards to their difference in hours? Is that because we, there's a business case for a new hire? So again, we'll pause it there, just looking at the primary port reports at Float, but don't hesitate to join future webinars, ask questions, ping us in our chat, or simply just leave feedback if you have any questions for us. So we're here to help and we look forward to working with you and your team and making sure your team is set up for success in Float. Have a great one. Bye, everyone.